<clears throat> I think for most of us on this call um, and, and a lot of the talks today, the, the $300 million end game, uh, similar to Addison Lee in the sports and sports science world is being able to ask questions of your, of your data and getting answers to improve your process, build better athletes, um, and improve that player development. And so from our performance intelligence research initiative, led by uh, a few great people within our, our company, Derek McHugh and, and Mark Bushite, who I think most are familiar with, um, wanted to share with you kind of a piece of analytics that we did for an EPL Academy um, and the EPPP project that had, you know, approximately seven years of, of data. And so obviously the EPPP now is 10 years old. Um, and obviously my previous role at the Premier League, I kind of was heavily involved in, in that. And um, the PL are currently doing a wide ranging review around the impacts it's had across the pyramid. And a major part of that is obviously the use of data for player development, but not just as a historical piece, but to see what, what has not see what's been done, but allow potentially for some insights and, and into what is possible. So like, as you see here, like one of the really obvious ones is the dropout rate. So well known in area for the system, like how often people are dropping out, where they're dropping out as the, um, there. But the questions now is, OK, so we know this. What does that mean? And what does it mean for moving forward? So if we can kind of start to influence that and help with those questions, then hopefully we can bring some insights into what areas we can discuss and how we can move together and try and improve that for the, all the individuals that are within the academy program. Yeah, and taking it on, I think one of the big questions, is, as Michael just said, was kind of the dropout rates and what were the key areas. And in this particular analysis, you know, you can see at the U16 level, there was a significant drop. And so, you know, then the next question becomes, how come? And, and the club realized that, hey, this is when we start offering scholarships. And so as a result, you know, people have to make bigger decisions on whether they continue and move forward. Um, and then from there, you know, once they kind of understood that attrition rate, they wanted to start to ask, well, how do you get from that U10 level or when you come into the club to sign a professional contract? So we could start to look at the different pieces of, of how um, kids or, or athletes move through, through the club. And so in this particular instance, for every 100 kids, you know, 15 of them were essentially signing pro contracts uh, in the U23 level. And so once we were able to do that, we were starting to look at what were the, the, all the factors that had progressions from you know, one age group to another age group or one age group across a couple age groups? Um, because what may influence you know, moving from one age group to another might have be significantly different to signing that pro contract. And so looking at the different relationships between the age groups through their path, through the academy, and start looking at the relationships of all these various metrics within the uh within the uh system so when when the guys when i joined recently to, to kitman the guys showed me this and started to talk to me about it which chimed with kind of my experiences as coaching in academies and then working at the premier league and it kind of really stuck with me a one young player that i'd worked with um who at the time was an under 14 and personally in the coaching staff around us thought we were doing an amazing job we thought we were doing a really good job with him in terms of the development he was having the areas he was working on um, and I sat in um, with the under 18s decision-making kind of pro contract conversations. And there was a very similar player to this under 14 that they were talking about. And basically they were discussing about, well, we can give him a pro contract because of his levels now, but he's not going to go and have a career with us with all things he's doing. So actually they decided not to, to kind of give him a pro contract. And suddenly it was a really eye-opening situation for me was thinking, well, hold on a sec, we're doing things here day to day to help him transition from 14 to 15 to 16. But actually, what are we doing to help him in the longer term side of it to have a professional career? Because maybe the things we're doing now are helping him make those small steps. But how do we make him make the big step towards the end goal of having a career in the game? So we had to kind of really make a change to the way we work. So what we had the decision around was that the elements and the physical side of it, we had to really dial up the work there. So we really had to start pushing some of the physical elements with this player to be able to maybe go box to box a little bit more as opposed to maybe sitting in front of the back four and linking play up um, and then maybe pull some of the work back on the technical tactical side of stuff because he was very strong in those areas so it's recognizing that in myself in what we're doing we haven't maybe given him the best opportunity to progress in his career so that was a really big learning curve in a moment and it was really interesting then seeing these kind of metrics and these things that the guys have done with this academy 
to kind of show the the potential kind of progression and, and relation of how they kind of feed into one another. Yeah, and I think the other piece is to just add on what Michael was saying is as we started getting into this and seeing those kind of multifactorial relationships is we could start to dig in and see how important each factor independently affects graduation and what are the optimal ranges for each of those factors and how it uh, contributes to graduation rates. So we looked at data consistency, so that collection across time, validity, different ways to look at the metric and calculations, timelines that may skew things from younger to older uh, within the different areas. And, and similarly kind of comments, I guess, for me on, on to the previous slide, like when we talked about this and the first two bits here, where it talks about played above age group and percentage of time to do that, I, I was starting to thinking about center forward who I'd worked with. And lots of people have come across this where you've got a young player who's maybe scoring a lot of goals within his own age group. So the natural instinct is, okay, now we're to push him up an age group and he's going to play against older players. We're going to, he's going to have to improve his movement and he's going to have to kind of develop different parts of his game because it's too easy in his own age group. But what, what we found, and this is probably more through reflection of seeing his pathway since then, is we created unintended consequences um, that he would only start to finish and score goals with his stronger foot because maybe he wasn't quick enough to get away from the defender anymore. So when it came on the, the, the bits, he would be trying to strike on his right and he would maybe chop away from using his weaker foot. And so he did, didn't develop those kind of things in his game. So within that, that in mind, obviously the, the, the thoughts around maybe he needs to play more in his own age group to score as well so that he can practice with his weaker foot, he can practice finishes from the edge of the area, can practice finishing around the box so he can become more round in terms of his finishing and his hold-up play rather than just learning to finish on his stronger side. So when the opportunity comes to his left side, he'd turn away from it because he didn't feel we had the power and the pace to get away from players and score the goals. So just really interesting to tie that back, I guess, for seeing this data with my experiences as a coach and, and, and some of the individual work that we maybe done over the years. Yeah, and I think that unattended uh, consequences is really interesting in this process that we'll kind of get to and explain through complex systems. And so from all this, we were able to create this graduation model scorecard um, for the club that could use to help guide coaches, decision-making, strengthen instincts of the coaches and really align the academy on what was important to them and strengthen what they were already doing and maybe upskill other areas where they thought to Michael's points may be needed. And so, you know, looking at what are the most important factors at each age group and how does that change over time? What are the differences over time? How should we use, uh, you know, that kind of information to influence the training focus, the development of planning, any kind of syllabus design? Um, how can we use the knowledge to better benchmark and evaluate athletes at each level? How can we use this information to better educate our coaches and staff and athletes about what matters at each level? And then how can we use this to increase, you know, ultimately the, the graduation rates and, and develop players? And obviously, like that, that as an academy coach, there's, there's all the, the development around stuff. But ultimately, that's the outcome we were looking for, isn't it? How can we increase our graduation <coughs> rates? How can we kind of improve that? opportunity for the young people to progress um, and for me that really demonstrates what's possible um, for us to then reflect upon things when we're looking at the Premier League and the EPPP and what they're doing and where we're trying to go with it as across the whole system but obviously it's no small undertaking to get to this point um, you need to have that information you need to be kind of putting those systems and structures into place to help facilitate to make those decisions and then get the insights from the data which then moves us into to the next area around complex system thinking.